Hi, everyone. My name is Cynthia Arenas. I'm 16 years old. Not only am I a daughter of immigrants, but I'm also an immigrant. I was seven when my dad was still making pan in Mexico, you know, and he decided once to come to the United States because he had a, a dream, a dream for me to become someone better. My dad is everything to me. When he made that choice, he left without even telling my mom. But he knew he was doing it for us. Two months later, my mom tells me we're leaving a TJ. We left to Tijuana, and I was finally going to be with my dad. My mom crossed before I did. She had a visa. I didn't have anything. My dad was even scared to go to any place here to, get, to sign a paper for me to get a visa. I wasn't able to. He preferred to pay for me to, for someone across me. It was about September, endings of September, when, you know, they picked me up from my aunt's house. They're telling me, it was in the night, it was really late. They picked me up and they said, We're, you're gonna be with your dad, finally. You know, it was this joy I felt finally with my dad, you know? And when I'm crossing the border, these people start asking questions. And there was one simple question that changed my whole life. What's your favorite movie? I knew nothing. I, I was, you know, I knew no English. So I turn, I look at my cousin, y le digo, ¿qué dijo? That's when immigration noticed that I was an immigrant. I walked with the immigration officer to a room. They checked my cousin, they checked everybody there. We were in a room about this size, and I wasn't the only immigrant there. There was many of us. It was this cold room where the AC was on, fans were on, the sandwiches that they gave us were from days before. I, I wanted to go to the restroom, and I told my cousin, let's go to the restroom. She goes, she's, she's about 18, she goes with me to the restroom, and I see where you dry your hands. I was so cold, I only had a thin sweater. I told her, I'm like, you press the dryer thingy while I'm in the bottom keeping myself warm. I slept on a hard floor. Without thinking about anything else but my parents. Asking her, where are my parents? She tried to keep me calm for a while, but it was impossible. She was, you know, hugging me, pressing the dryer, still keeping me warm. I stood in the restroom overnight. <laughs> My mom was calling. She didn't know where I was at. The next day in the morning, around 8, 9, an officer comes in and he says, you guys are free. You guys can go. We both walked out and realized we had nothing. We didn't have anybody's number, anybody's address, nothing. Before that, we had gone to eat tacos, so she got the change by accident. She had 10 pesos on her, which is about 80 cents here. We come out, and I see some stands, and I see a Virgin Mary. You know, I'm a, this little girl, you know, only seven. And I'm like, I want it, I want it. I didn't know she didn't have money, but she still got it for me. It was about four pesos. We had like six pesos left. And when, she, when we got it, we walked. We walked a little bit and I seen a bus. You know, I was all happy with my Virgin Mary, you know, walking. And I seen a bus and I run towards that bus. I don't know why I got that feeling of running towards that bus. She's like, what are you doing? And she runs after me. And she says, she's like, no, no, this was. And I was like, I'm already on the bus, you know? So she, she gives me the money and she's like, we pay whatever. Five to 10 minutes after, I looked up. I was exactly at the taqueria where we had ate that night. It was in the bottom of the block from my aunt's house. So I got back home. How did I do it? I don't know. And we tried it again two weeks after. And I was able to come through. Finally, my dad, my everything, I was in back with him. Everybody pictured LA like the richest thing 
Donde vienes a barrer el dinero. Basically, that's what they picture it in Mexico. And it's not like that. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have such a good life here. Oh, it's going to be great. But no, everything started all over. I didn't know the language. I didn't have anybody. I would say hours up. I was only in third grade. But it wasn't really until my sixth grade year where I actually found unconditional love from a person who was, standing, was sitting down in front of me. When I met him, he exposed me to technology. I am now the program manager for the robotics team at Roosevelt High School. Yeah. And I love to share this because the girl who could have been making fun in Mexico with my mom <laughs> is now making robots with students here. It's the dreams I have of going to MIT. And I see my dreams as they're crazy. Like, dude, who's really gonna get an MIT? Like, you don't have papers. You, you can't, can't even travel. You can't do anything. But you know what? I think about my story and I don't set myself excuses. I set myself reasons to get there. And I think MIT is a reason why I became who I am, you know, because I've set myself so high. Bill Clinton last year said at Transform that America creates 40,000 engineers and we need 120,000 engineers. And I'm here to say back that I'm willing to take one of those spots and become one of those engineers. Thank you.